well how are you students from today we are starting with a very important part of the biological section that is the human health and disease as you are aware that disease is something which in the modern life has become a part and parcel of life a slight negligence from our side about our diet about our feeding diet means feeding about our clothing about our environment exposes us to number of the diseases and even visiting a market place it's not that easy it's not safe if you are visiting a market place which is overcrowded because once you are in overcrowded place you are more exposed to diseases i'm not saying that uh, you should stop visiting the market but you know everything has got pros and cons what one needs to do is to take care or to be precautious about the cons part of a coin that is negative part of the coins and in these sections the upcoming discussions we will be having we will be looking into that what actually i am talking about and what one is expected to do to have a good happy smiling life so in the first section first we should know what actually we mean by these by these three terms that are put up in red color a person is healthy a person is weak or a person is diseased because it's a very simple confusion most of the students uh, or people are confused when it come to pus when they say or when it comes to the person saying he is weak or he is diseased or he is healthy so one has to be clear about that one signifies an other person as a diseased healthy or weak person what are the parameters is he looking at or what parameters he needs to look into before calling someone by either uh, by any of these three uh, three names of disease healthy or weak because first looking at the healthy person a person is considered healthy when he is socially emotionally and biologically fit socially fit means he is good he is okay when interacting with his friends with his elders youngers emotionally he is right he thinks about negative positive does not shout does not speak unnecessarily and then biologically that means he is able to say to walk run watch like myself if i say i am healthy i am not because the glass on my eyes they put me biologically into the category of the diseased person why because biologically my eyes are not okay so i am not a healthy person i am more a diseased person so each and every point ought to be looked into when we call a person to be a healthy person and to be honest for a person to be completely healthy 100% it seems to be something like impossible because somewhere somehow major or minor person has got some defects maybe that those effects 
or defects that they have does not affect his day to day life or does not appear for other persons to watch and see and call him deceased while he is let me give you a very simple example of aids in the initial phase if a person is suffering is infected with the aids virus hiv virus if you look a watch at the person in first 3 or 4 years of his uh, after infection the person seems almost uh, normal just by watching or looking at the person you can't say that whether he's got an infect or he's infected with the hiv or not unless the blood test is been carried out at least a test same thing you are you are just traveling in a bus in a public bus public transport bus or train there is person a stranger sitting next to you he is suffering from a disease maybe an infectious disease you may or you may not know because what a person is suffering from does not appear on the forehead of a person it doesn't appear like a placard that i am suffering from this disease you should keep away it doesn't the only thing is that when a person suffers from some symptoms some infl- inflammatory facts which may or may not be visible to the, the common public or doctor happens to know them or diagnose them by using series of tests whether it's blood test urine test excess whatever the case may be that's why that healthy person is the one though very difficult to find but is the one that we consider who is economic uh, who is uh, uh, economically means if you are economically healthy that means you are socially healthy as well these days in the modern times you are emotionally healthy and you are biologically fit and if you are not then what either you are weak or you are diseased now we, when we say weak that means the person is not diseased he does not have got any infirmity he does not have got, uh, he doesn't have got any problem with him the only problem is the food maybe that he is poor enough to purchase enough food to have a proper diet that's why he is failing to meet his calorie requirement and that lack of calorie requirement is putting him into the category or shifting him to the, into the category of the weak person but otherwise he is not diseased but a diseased person can be as i mentioned may look healthy or may look weak because he is suffering from some dis, some kind of disorder he is not mentally fit maybe he is not socially fit whatever whomsoever he meet he talks irrelevance he talks of what he thinks about without realizing his position or his status or the surroundings or that his body organ is having a problem like even a stomach pain headache as you call in general words he is suffering from that because headache stomach pain these actually are not diseases they are just the warning symptoms warning signs body is warning you if you are uh, if you happen to have a fever what actually fever is uh, shall i call a fever to be a disease now fever is not a disease it is a warning f- to me given by my body that mr please visit a doctor there is something which is not good not okay in your body if i have a stomach ache that means the stomach is warning me there is something wrong in your stomach please take necessary precautions so whatever these sort of the suffering that person suffers from they are not actually the disease they are the symptoms they are they are they are good for me they are good for anyone 
because if those symptoms doesn't appear we will know that there is something wrong going inside our body to enforce us to visit a doctor or a visit a hospital or a, a uh, clinic for a treatment therefore on this basis if you look at these are the three type of the person that we see uh, in our surroundings there is no fourth one either person deceased weak or is healthy right let's proceed when we look at a disease healthy fine weak fine give him a proper food he will shift into the category of the healthy for disease he need to be treated treated with what depends upon the infection depends upon a disease in some case he may not be able to be treated like hereditary disease the disease the child gets from his parents this is like age for which even the medical world has failed to find the treatment as yet and there are some more diseases for which the scientific world is struggling to find the uh, treatment so it depends but in general for your level the basic all the diseases have, can only be classified in two categories two broadest of the categories hereditary disease and acquired disease hereditary that means the diseases a child gets or end up suffering from right from his birth why because either his parents his or her parents or grandparents might have been suffering from the disease therefore through the genes or dna the disease has been transmitted at its own at the time of the fert uh, gametogenesis and fertilization that you will learn in the reproduction and mostly these diseases have no treatment if a child is born with a particular disease disease like hemophilia color blindness or uh, sickle cell anemia phenylketonuria there are number of diseases like these there are long list then there is no answer there is no treatment even a down syndrome there is no answer for that because the hereditary disease and the scientific world world has not yet uh, developed to that stage of biotechnology to find a treatment for a disease although efforts are going on and then come the category of the acquired disease that means the disease a child obtains or end up suffering from after the birth and then these that means the child is getting these diseases and these diseases have been further classified into three categories nutritional diseases non infectious diseases or infectious diseases when i say nutritional diseases that means do, uh, these are diseases which are directly and indirectly related to my nutrition that means what am i eating eating means in my nutrition the major parts are what carbohydrate fats proteins minerals and vitamins even the water if i don't take enough of the water i may end up suffering from dehydration or my food is lacking roughage i'll end up suffering from constipation if it is a particular mineral there are number of the minerals which have been classified in two broad categories macro and micro macro means required in large quantities micro means required in small quantities but irrespective of the fact that whether a mineral is a macro mineral nutrient or a micro mineral nutrient it is required if it is not available to the body body is going to get affected negatively and will show its own effect same is case with the vitamins there are number of diseases that are caused because of deficiencies of vitamins like vitamin a b c d e k there are number of 
there is series of vitamins that we will be looking into that that if those vitamins are there it's in the required quantity is fine if they are less we end up suffering from them and if in case if they exceeds they go above the limit then also there occur some problems the person get disease so anything that is related with the nutrition or any one of the major component of the nutrition is what the nutritional disease we talk of non infectious diseases that means these diseases are those diseases that does not pass from one person that does not get transmitted pass means transmitted from an infected person to a healthy person that is someone shares the food shares the bed with the person or shares the glass of water with him the disease does not get transmitted healthy person remains healthy and uh, the disease remains disease this is like diabetes you know a person is suffering from sugar diabetes if you share the food with him it's not that a per- the person sharing the food will going to get uh, diabetic no same is the hypertension heart diseases etc some of these diseases are kidney problems these are diseases if uh, they are restricted to a particular individual because his body organ his or her body organ is not working in the fashion it should so that's uh, up limit up to him or her the other person or other members of family are not un- remain unaffected and therefore these diseases all these nutritional diseases have been cat- cat- categorized in three first is pcm pcm stands for protein calorie malnutrition protein that means a diet person is living on particular child that is deficient in protein is also eating the food that is failing to meet his energy requirements of about uh, some 2000 for an infant it is less for an adult it is uh, 2800 kilo, uh, kilo calories per day provided the uh, person is not involved in carrying out any heavy work during the course of the day so if the pers- if the child or a person is suffering from these disease- these deficiencies he is put under the category of the pca and then comes under nutrition that means the person is eating the food but the food he is eating is not enough sometimes if you realize that a child uh naturally an infant uh, a young infant they, they can't speak that they are hungry what happens they keep crying and anything that uh, looks white seems uh, milk to them because they are not yet uh, acquainted with what actually the milk is they are concerned with the f- uh, filling of the belly so in that case in very young children up to an age of 1 to 3 years a child end up suffering from disease called marasmus if you look at this marasmus is a small word if you compared with a kafshiokar so it occurs in the children up to an age of 1 to 3 years whereas kafshiokar occurs in the elder children from an age of 3 to 5 years and in marasmus you know child becomes very scaly that means if you look at the child you can count the number of the bones in the body you can even see the chest bones the child is and uh, with its ch- uh, cheeks that are sunken eyes has gone down or gone inside the child is very very weak but if i compare the marasmus with kavishka kavishka is what we call as pot belly condition 
though the child is not getting enough food what happens he is uh, drinking lot of lot and lot of water and as a result his belly becomes something like this it protrudes out and but otherwise the child is mentally mentally weak physically weak and would uh, continue laying down rather than active even the hair although it's in both cases the hair uh, have a tannish color that means they turn tan type uh, they are not black they are slightly brownish in color that means that sparkle in the hair that has to be there in the child's hair is not there that's in both cases but the basic difference is in that the in these two is that in marasmus is in early stages of child that is 1 to 3 years of the age kavish kar big word from 3 years onward in marasmus child becomes thin in kavish kar is a big word therefore it's the child of from pot belly conditions but in both cases the growth of the child is seriously affected both physical mental emotional whatever is you may take it from whatever the direction you look at the health of the child that is severely affected in case of both marasmus and kavishka then comes non infectious diseases again non infectious disease disease that do not get transmitted from an infected person to the healthy person and uh, there is again a long long list of these diseases like you might have heard of the old people or old age uh, people uh, complaining about the pain in joints arthritis you must have heard of the people suffering from sugar heart 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 problems or having stomach problems uh, having ulcers having kidney problems having the disease like jaundice liver diseases so all these diseases these are non communicable diseases they are, that means they are not they are non infectious diseases we also call them as non communicable whereas infectious are the one that we call as communicable because these diseases they get transmitted from an infectious person to the uh, healthy person that is if a person is suffering from cholera or from uh, uh, typhoid if you share a glass of water with him or if a person is uh, suffering from uh, tuberculosis tb and you share a room with him there are chances for uh, the healthy person to get uh, infected with the disease because the pathogen the germs for the disease can easily pass from the infected person to the healthy person and these infectious diseases based on what actually is caused has caused the disease what is the basic cause of the disease that we call as causative agent have further been classified in these five cat five types that is viral this is caused by viruses like chickenpox polio uh hiv the aids mumps rabies these are some of the diseases that passes that are caused by the viruses bacteria and bacteria the very common diseases are the ones like cholera typhoid jaundice these are some of the common diseases protozoan one of the most common of all the protozoan disease is malaria malaria is a protozoa plasmodium that uh, causes the disease the when female anopheles bites only female anopheles not male why because male never visits a person's body to suck blood the male anopheles feeds on the nectar from flower it is on the female and a fleas who feeds on human blood 
and there is also a time gap of 14 days that means if a female and a flea has bitten a person and has sucked the blood today then the female and a flea will take about 13 to 14 days to digest that blood and in the meantime the female and a flea may visit the body but will not suck the blood and then come the alimentary disease these are the diseases which are called as worms You have in the class animal classification you have learned about the worms. There are two type of worms, flat worms and the round worms. There are some uh, flat worms like tenius oleum, like uh, liver fluke, which cause the diseases. Same way, round worms such as pin worms, ascaris. These are the worms who get in uh, who once inside the body. They live mostly in the uh, alimentary canal, that is either in the small intestine or in the large intestine, uh, creating what you call as false hunger pains. What we call them as false hunger pains. That means if a person has eaten the food, just uh, maybe 15 minutes later, he may end up suffering, uh, feeling like to eat more. Why? Because whatever the food he is eating, that food is being shared by that, that worm inside the body. And you may be surprised that a, a flat worm that we call tenia solium, a, a mature tenia solium may be about 5 to 6 meters in length. A single worm residing in the in the alimentary canal of a person can be six to seven meters in length. So now you can imagine that how much nutrients uh, will that uh, flat worm will be using up. That's why their presence leads to one of the very common symptoms of false hunger pains. And then fungal disease among the fungal disease, the ringworm disease. Or athlete foot, you see a round color patch that appears sometimes on the body. And if you don't uh, take care of that, it keeps on spreading at that very zone. Now, that is what is caused by a fungus, uh, tinea. Uh, but that's not necessary for you to know, as long as you know that it is being caused by the fungus. So, these, these are the basic level of classification of the disease. There is one more level of classification of disease that we call as classification based on mode of transmission. It is only for the infectious diseases. Because it is only the infectious diseases that get transmitted, that get transmitted from an infected person to a healthy person. And hence, these infectious diseases are have got different ways by which they can get transmitted from one person to another. One is physical contact. Like touching, ringworm disease that you know, the cause that white patches that appear, white round patches that appear here on the skin. All STDs, sexually transmitted diseases like gonorrhea, syphilis, etc. They are being caused because of the personal contact that a per infected person and the healthy person, they come in physical contact of each other. And as they come in contact of each other, the disease, the transmission of the disease take place. Even the AIDS. 
uh, it's a di- whether it's a direct contact or it's an indirect contact, but there is a contact between the infectious person and the healthy person for the virus to get transmitted, HIV virus to get transmitted from one healthy person to the uh, from infected person to the healthy person. The other is air. As you as you are breathing, you you might know or might have realized that whenever you cough, you sneeze. Not only that, you blow out the air, you also blow out some water droplets. Those uh, germs, they are present in those water droplets. And they, these water droplets remain in the air. Now, the thing is that once we are sitting, if number of people are sitting in a single room, what you are exhaling is what I am inhaling. Right? Or what you are exhaling, I am inhaling, and what I am exhaling, you are inhaling. Therefore, they say, try to avoid face-to-face talk with a stranger. That means don't keep your nose in a line when you are talking to a stranger. Maintain maintain some distance because when talking, uh, when he speaks, if he is infected with an airborne disease, what may happen is that the the germs may pass into your body and cause infections to you. And then there can be food and water. Drinking of contaminated water, particularly if you would have heard of or uh, read, read that uh, particularly when these uh, mela, these fair, etc., they take place at the bank of the rivers like Ganges, Yamuna, etc., or Namada, people visiting there for bathing. They end up suffering from diseases uh, that have been caused by water, uh, like such as cholera, typhoid, jaundice. These are the three common diseases that are transmitted either by the water or by the food. And then there are diseases caused by vector. Vector means vector is an animal. That means the infected person is not going to transmit the disease directly to me. From infected person to an animal. And then from animal to a healthy person. Now this animal, who is the carrier of the disease, the germs of the disease, is called vector. Such as rabies. A dog is rabid. The dog transmits the disease. And where did the dog got the disease from? Maybe from an infected person. Maybe from an infected person. Malaria. Where did the female anaphylis got the germ for malaria? Female Anaphilis got the germs when she bit an infected person. She sucked the blood. Blood had pathogens, the germs for malaria. Those germs went in, remained in the body of the female Anaphilis, multiplied in their numbers. And when next time, the same female Anaphilis, now infected, now carrier of the germs, bit another, another person, some of the blood got mixed, some of the saliva having those germs get mixed with the human blood of a healthy person. And the, as a result, what has happened? The germs have been passed into the healthy person. So now female anaphylis is acting as a vector. So when the disease passes, not directly but through an animal, from an infected person to a healthy person that we call it as a vector transmission of the disease where vector is an animal that transmits the disease from an infected person to a healthy person. Am I right? So this is another uh, class of the modification, uh, sorry, classification of the diseases. Which is that is based or which is based on the mode of transmission, how the trans germs 
for a particular infectious disease can pass from an infected person to a healthy person now this is about in general about the diseases and today we will be more restricting ourselves to the diseases that are caused by the minerals minerals you know when we talk of minerals we talk of ions well both cations and anions cations when we say cation and anion cation that means positive and anions mean negative like magnesium magnesium we write 2 plus that means it's a cation when we write chloride we write negative that means it is an anion so both cation and anions they are important for us for our healthy and successful survival and here are some of the questions which have so far been asked every now and then in one form or other in the previous exams let's look at these questions carefully well let's start with the question that has so far been asked in the previous year exams the question first says the mineral ion necessary for synthesis of hemoglobin is hemoglobin you know is a pigment it's a red color pigment which is present in rbc right and these rbcs are about 5 million in cc 1 cc cubic centimeter of the blood and therefore the blood is red in color now what is this hemoglobin made up of that means if i try to break it it will break into two one is heme and other is globulin globulin is a protein present in the blood plasma heme is what heme stands for iron and if i look at my option there are two options with iron one and four iron 3 or iron 2 when we try to look into iron 3 or iron 2 we realize that iron 2 is the one that is involved in the synthesis of hemoglobin and is or help in the transport of oxygen iron 3 has got no role if iron 3 is there blood may not transport any oxygen and a person would end up suffering from oxygen starvation and die right next the mineral ions necessary for healthy formation of bones are iron zinc copper and cadmium calcium and uh, phosphate sodium and chloride option c is the correct why because bones are compounds of tri calcium phosphate with the formula ca3 PO4 whole twice, and in this formula, if we see it, it's calcium ions and phosphate ions that are involved, and hence the option C is the correct one. Next, the mineral ions necessary for the normal functioning of muscles are sodium and copper, calcium and magnesium, chloride and iodide. potassium and chloride actually the option 2 is the correct one why what happens is that if this is a muscle and let's say here is a nerve 
that is coming in this now branches off into the different nerve fibers and at this point if we look at the junction is like this there's a nerve fiber and here's the nerve when the impulse comes what happens impulse releases calcium ions and once released calcium ions are released the muscles fibers get activated to start contraction now this is where the calcium is important magnesium is important because magnesium is an iron necessary for protein synthesis and you know that magnesium ion is necessary in the protein synthesis that the muscle fibers are made up of the two proteins are actin and myosin it's like this there is actin this is actin this is actin this is actin in between is the myosin like this what they come the actin ones these two these ones they come closer they move away they come closer move away alternately when they come closer my muscles contract when they push away the muscle relax while myosin remains where it is it is actin that goes forward and backward making the muscle to contract and relax next the richest source of calcium ions calcium ions are important for the bone formation for the contraction of muscles etc we have just discussed which is the richest source of calcium ions marine food while well, marine foods are rich in all almost all minerals green vegetables fruits with red color peel citrus fruits the best answer to be here is green vegetables because green vegetables such as spinach coriander right they are or the leaves in them they carry a good percentage of calcium ions and these are the ones that are being eaten by all people whether they are veg or non veg if they are non veg fine in the form of salads they take uh, vegetable forms like cucumber etc if they are veg naturally they are taking this that way so the green vegetables are the best sources of the calcium ions next the mineral ion lacking in the milk is lacking in the milk if you look at milk is considered as a complete food that means if you are taking a milk you are carry you are taking in all the par all sorts of minerals and vitamins necessary except two things that the milk lacks and these two things are are iron in the minerals and vitamin c in the vitamins these are the two major nutrients that the milk lacks otherwise milk contains all major and micronutrients to be considered as a complete food in itself that means if you supplement the milk with a with something which is rich in iron and vitamin c i think that's enough for the body's normal growth 
So the correct answer is A, that iron uh, milk is uh, lacking in iron. Next, which of the statement is correct? Both males and females can smell with their nose closed. That means we close our nostrils and we try to smell something. Can we? Both male and female can do that. Neither males nor female can smell with closed nose. Well, it's a male or female, once they close their nose, nostrils, they fail to smell. Females can smell. That means they have got the uh, more olfactory senses than males. Or males can smell with their nose closed, but not female. That means the males have got more uh, olfactory abilities than the females. These are four options, A, B, A, B, or neither A nor B. Then, the option is B. Whether it's a male or female, as long as it is human, as we say, let me put that way. Because humans are the male or female are, are none but human. All humans have got the cells which help in smelling, that is the olfactory cells, in the lining of their nostrils. If you close the nose, the particles that can, that can impart the smell or activate the olfactory cells will not pass there and the person would fail to smell. Hence, both male and female can't smell once their nose are closed. Next, fruit with the largest percentage of magnesium ions. Magnesium, as you remember, I did mention that the calcium and magnesium are necessary for the contraction and relaxation of the muscles. Now, which of these fruits has a list of four fruits? Apple, banana, apricot, and ragawa. Which is which has got the largest percent of magnesium ion? The largest percent of magnesium ion is present in banana. Ripe banana contains a large percentage of magnesium ions, as compared to uh, apple and guava. Because apple and guava and apricot are the parts which are rich in iron content. That's why if you cut an apple or a guava and leave it outside, you find a slightly rust, rusty color uh, deposition take place on the surface. Guava contains more of iron than even an apple. That You may be surprised to know that. That the uh, iron percentage of guava is more than that of the apple. While for magnesium, it is the banana which is the must. Necessary for the particularly cardiac muscles because these are the muscles which keep on beating even we we were born before that they had started beating circulating the blood in our body till our till the time we die next the malfunctioning of the kidney in a healthy person when starts taking chemically contaminated water is because of which ions damage kidney? Nickel, cobalt, cadmium, or mercury? Actually, it is cadmium ions. And this discovery of the cadmium ions came from the discovery of the chocolates. You know, the children, they prefer to eat a lot of chocolates. And later they realized that children who are eating who feed on number, uh, too many of the chocolates a day, later in their life, mostly get prone to the kidney problems. Because the cadmium, once deposited in the body, being a heavy metal, it continues to get deposited in the body. And once deposited in the body, it damages the func normal functioning of the kidney. So, C, option C is the correct answer. Next, Minimata disease. 
Minimata disease actually is a disease related with uh, what, I, what actually happened when it was discovered, it was realized that in one of the islands in Japan, where there were factories or there were industries involved with glass manufacturing or manufacturing of thermometers where the glass is, is being used as one of the material for the construction of thermometers. The waste water that was released into the oceans had good percentage of mercury. And then the fishes in that area, in that coastal area close to those industries, had high percentage of mercury that ended up in the bodies of the fish that we call as biomagnification. or bioaccumulation and from fish because the people in the coastal area they prefer to uh, survive on the food easily available that is a fish now when these people coastal people feed on this fish in which in whom the mercury has uh, bioaccumulated their mercury ended up departing in the body and that made them suffer from the disease caused by mercury and that's what is called mercury ions therefore you know that uh, this biomagnification is a very important factor whatever the uh, chemi uh, pesticide etc chemical pesticide etc that are sprayed in the field they end up reaching into our body irrespective of the fact whether the quantity is minimal or is more. But as they are organic pesticides, they cannot be digested and they continue to accumulate in the body and that can create a problem. And that's why in the uh, recent years, if you look into that scientists or the people worldwide has started uh, shifting the mode of agriculture to organic agriculture or that's what you call as organic farming because organic farming that uh, does not involve the use of the chemical chemical pesticides chemical fertilizers etc it is because of the effect the scientists have realized of these chemicals that are being sprayed on the fruits vegetables crops in the field onto the human health later